Absolutely. I think I, I, I like this idea, you know, when I write about it, I thought, wow, who would think of that, you know, and then this is where the human part of it comes, you know, um, giving them some kind of uh, something to look forward to. And yeah. I always believe uh, in this preparing the mind, the mind and body and this balance that should exist uh, in every human's existence. So truly applaudable and, and commendable uh, work, uh, Dr. Kiran Bailey. You're no stranger to this story. And your story has been a story that's talked about when before I even met you. That was the first thing everyone talked about, Dr. Kiran Bailey. And so I'm so proud and happy that I'm here with you talking about um, your achievements. And the most recent achievement, of course, uh, is your book. So perhaps that's linked directly uh, to your tenure in Puducherry. So let's talk about your book, Fearless Governance. I know when I was calling you, you know, and you were saying, Dr. Kiran is so busy with a book. Tell us about your book, Fearless Governance. It's an amazing product. It's a, it's a peak of my career. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a peak of my career. And I'm so happy that I could, I had the time to write it. And I got this as a time during the COVID year. After I finished with the left in governorship, I returned home to Delhi from Pondicherry. And that happened to be the COVID year also, mm. right? So there was total isolation in a way. And to write, you need a very quiet time to yourself. Mm. So, but the good news is that from the day one of my starting my work as Lieutenant Governor Puducherry, I had retained every valuable document. Every, doc, every tweet I sent or I uh, blogged or I had a graphic or I had a press release, or I had a minutes of the meeting, which were not secret, or I had an order issued or a mentoring note, I, and or a visual or a video tip, which I would do it on my iPhone. Everything was documented. I kept document, not knowing one day when I would write the book, but mm. I was ready to write the book authentically. Because when you write about others' happenings, others' flaws and other strengths, you've got to have documentation. So when I came back to Delhi, it happened to be the COVID year, I came with my library. I flew back with my library. And I set up a library in the house called the Documentation Room. And mm -hmm. then I start to chapterize my book and start to think about, reflect it. And this is how this book came. This Fantastic. Book. Congratulations, Dr. I this love how, the cover. This book is a product of uh, five plus six years of work. It's five years of actual work and one year of full research. See, mm. so this book, fortunately, is available on Kindle as well, and also on Amazon. This book is available, but I've also gifted away all the royalties of the book for my foundations, two foundations called India Vision Foundation and Navjyoti India Foundation. They educate the marginalized sections of society and also causes in Puducherry. So royalties will, will come from the publisher, will be dedicated to causes. So the, I'm not written this book for any gains, financial gain. I've written it for grooming leadership because this is all about leadership. How can a public servant, how can a public official serve their country or their office or the place of work fearlessly? And Indira Nui, who is the world the renowned CEO, woman CEO, you know, she was president and CEO of PepsiCo for a long, long time. And she's the most one of the most acclaimed female CEOs. She released this book and she mm -hmm. said, she said, this is a blueprint of good governance. And she said that the leadership uh, uh, elements which have been li listed out in this book cut across private and the government sector. They are universal principles. So what did I do? I, whatever I've seen, whatever I saw, because it was, I came across broken down systems. I saw corruption. I saw crime, uh, I saw land grabbing, I saw uh, filth and sanitation. When you had the government servants, when you had the politicians, when you had the political leadership, you had the public servants, and yet you have you had financial mismanagement, hmm. you have um, um, in, in sanitary conditions, you also had drought and so shortage of water, municipal amenities broken down. Or, when I opened the Raj Nivas as a left -hand governor, I was uh, in a palace called Raj Nivas. It's called Raj Nivas. So I opened up that palace for a common man's hearings, two hours daily, five uh, Monday to Friday, anybody could come on a token basis. And I heard them. I got to know the underbelly of Pondicherry, mm -hmm. the corruption, the, the criminalization, the extortion, the medical college seats, right? And I, when I found that out, 
All this is a part of the documentation. So I said, I start to address it without complaining to the government of India. I went back to the people. I connected it without punishing, without blaming, without mm. writing, without criticizing. I start to correct the systems. When I start to correct the systems and team up and work with the team approach, this is the book tells you about the teamwork, how we start to correct the situations, what were the problems, and how step by step in an open house grievance redressal system was taking morning weekly rounds, going to the people, bicycling as a lieutenant governor. I was cycling rather than leaving Mercedes car behind. I bicycled to be one of the commoner. I took away all the trappings of the leadership of sirens and noise in the car. See, to be one of the commoner and yet be a lieutenant governor who has a power to appoint, a power to approve budgets. All this is a part of this book, the how. But it also delays the, the proxy pro problems which, which disturbs the vested interests. How does it unnerve the vested interests? Whose only priority was how do they have what they want? Transactional. Theirs was a transactional leadership. Mine was a transformational leadership. Mine was a corrective leadership. Theirs was a complaining leadership. There's a big difference. So I think that's what this book is about. It was my duty to write. Because if I won't write this history, because things changed, things improved, things turned around, and we became the most best governed administrative union territory and the best improved in governance in the states of India, uh, the last year's surveys recording by the, by the national survey. So we have shown results. It's not that I'm talking about it. Two years consecutively, Puducherry as a unit territory became the most governed, sec most secure and government union territory of India and of the, of the states, which was, I think, very rare because we didn't know behind our back there was a survey going on. It was, I have done my duty of what I saw, what, I, what you do with what you see, and how you can improve, and what are the leadership qualities you need. So I've given a leadership model in the end. What are the key elements of leadership which we hmm. must follow, follow to do your job better? As Indra Nui says, there was a performance with purpose. There was a purpose in that performance. And what was the purpose? And the performance was prosperous Puducherry. I created a mission statement called prosperous Puducherry. That means all that you do, everybody should equally prosper from that. So this book is a documentation of that, which I'm so happy that it's gone viral already. Yeah, it's fantastic to hear about this kind of uh, taglines or, uh, you know, branding, you know, prosperous uh, Puducherry or, uh, uh, you know, people we used to call Malaysia, beautiful Malaysia, you know, or truly Asia. Now, these are uh, words that actually give quite a bit of gold. But you also talked about the underside. Uh, you know, the issues that were there to clean up. Um, did you face any, any kind of, um, what do you call that, challenges during that period? Uh, you had to deal with a lot of authorities uh, as well. Yeah, I, or maybe, or maybe uh, the government itself. Was there any uh, controversial elements that came up during this plenty, period? Plenty, Willow. I'd be surprised if there wouldn't be. There was a defiance. There was an opposition. Mm. There was a call for my returning. There were uh, lies trading, there were press conferences, I was cartooned, I was maligned. There was had to be hostility because though it hit the vested interest pockets. Mm. It hit the big bag pockets of many vested interests. For instance, one of the biggest achievements we've had is the National uh, Supreme Court ordering that the medical seat fee now, National Mission, National Mission for uh, uh, Medical Education has ruled, which was an extortion, Every medical student to get at an, um, admission in a medical college had to be had was fleeced, was charged exorbitantly. I challenged that also during my time. I mm. got an order from the Supreme Court of India that the fee has to be capped, and admission has to be by merit. Can you believe it? Today there's a government of India order where the fees have been capped. Fees have been capped of the private medical colleges all over the country. So what started as a struggle in Puducherry, and there's a chapter in the medical C chapter, there's a chapter in this book. If you read it carefully, you will get to see the struggle. The struggle, how we fought for the hapless students of medical colleges who were denied admissions because they didn't have the fee, the exorbitant fee to pay. Today, they have a reasonable fee to pay, capped mm. by the government of India and by the honorable courts. And you see that? It's benefited all over the country. 
So whatever we started as a small fight, which was a quite a struggle, because all the medical trust college were trusts. They were they were in namesake only trusts, but they were all profiteering, and they were mm -hmm. all trying to exhort extort money out of the poor children, hapless children. I became their voice. The Lieutenant Governor Office became their voice. We got them justice, and we secured it nationally today. It's recently, two weeks ago, less than a week ago, an mm -hmm. order came from the National Medical Commission of India. TV AIBD, a platform connecting the world virtually. Bring to your screen a plethora of real-time informative content. Everything from the latest trends in immersive technologies, regional media stories, insight from world leaders, and industry intelligentsia. Empowering broadcasters worldwide. Connect with TV AIBD now. Connecting the world. Okay, and I'm looking at it as an expose. You know, you were doing your policing right there in Puducherry, and uh, of course, this is something which is not just uh, focusing on um, you know the problems, but uh, you were doing your job uh, as the Lieutenant uh, uh, Mayor of that particular um, uh, vicinity, Puducherry or Pondicherry, as it was known at that time, right? So yes. it's a brief attempt and uh, something which has borne fruit and definitely a blueprint, uh, Dr. Kieran. It's a blueprint that will actually uh, be applicable, not just for India, but for many other leaders everywhere. Because I think one of the biggest problems that leaders today face uh, is the inability uh, to be decisive, right? So most often, you know, especially I've been in the civil service, people are still grappling with making decisions or, or um, you know, they don't want to lose their popularity. So there's always this struggle for leaders, you know, either they want to be popular and how do you continue being popular? Or do you just want to make a mark? So you've shown that making a mark can also make you popular. So you were definitely the people's voice uh, there, Dr. Kiran Bailey. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yes, as public servants, we are not for popularity. We are for performance. Performance. Performance first. Yes. So uh, Dr. Kiran, you know, this book is something on uh, good governance, leadership, not just for um, India, but also I think the essence of leadership is captured here. And you have many, many photographs. You said you have created a whole library and you know, brought it with you, shared videos uh, that are also accessible through QR code. Now that's very exciting. This is all, you know, you've kept up with the times. It's also a model, Philo, this book is also a model that democracy is all about people's participation. Real, mm -hmm. true democracy and governance is how do, you, how do you involve the stakeholders, which is mm -hmm. the people. So mm -hmm. it's an example where people and government, when they work together, they together succeed. Okay, fantastic. I think I like that, you know, this, this teamwork, uh, which is not just uh, leaders working for themselves or by themselves, but the involvement of uh, people. And then I, I like the way you turn the palace uh, into something, uh, you know, for everyone to come in and, and share their grievances. I mean, that took a lot of guts uh, for people and for yourself, you know, to break, um, you know, the norm, right, doctor? There so, is a chapter um, in the book on philo water, which uh, is very universally valid. So I'm br br bringing out a chapter called water harvesting. How uh -huh. did we make Pondicherry water rich? Today, yes. water is a major challenge world over. There's yes. a chapter on how did we, without a penny being spent by the government. Mm. There's a chapter in this book. Philo, I'd like to offer my soft copy to anybody, my uh -huh. soft copy with compliments to anybody who wants to read this book and not buy the book. I'm happy. My publisher is willing to make this book available online with compliments for anybody who wishes to read this book. It's my standing offer to the publisher and my publisher is very generous in doing this mm -hmm. because the copyrights are with me. If you mm -hmm. read the water rich Puducherry chapter of this book, I think the world has a solution where the haves provide the have nots, which means the donor, they clean up the ponds, they maintain the clean up the tanks. If mm. they are guzzling water for the tires, for, for aerated waters or for their oxygen plants, they also replenish. It's repair and replenish. While you use water, you also repair and replenish. So replenishment methodology by the haves, which is the multinationals, the many companies who've got mm. the machinery to diesel, 
to clean up the irrigation canals, the tanks, the lakes, the uh, with, by which the rainwater seeps in more. Mm. It goes. This there's a whole chapter on that. It has to be read. You don't need government funding for it. You just need a combined collab collaborative approach for it. That's mm. what the chapter is. Fantastic. And this water rich Puducherry uh, is also a documentary. You've also done a documentary, isn't it? You know, yes. where uh, the water table actually went up by six meters, meaning groundwater levels have actually increased. And there is this uh, fight for water democracy um, yes. is also being championed. And you are behind this thing. And I know that in India it's, uh, itself, and not just India, everywhere, water is becoming a scarcity, right? Uh, and, and you mentioned about it being sustainable and uh, replenish, uh, this is what people want to hear because it's a disappearing resource. Yeah, it can That's be community actually. replenished. It can be replenished by community collaboration. Mm. The, the, somebody may have the hands and somebody may have the money. Somebody mm. may have the machinery. So the neighborhood ponds, the neighborhood tanks, the neighborhood irrigation canals, so that the rainwater goes mm. into those canals. So that means you are water rich. That's where mm. we increase a diminishing water table to replenished and surplus. Absolutely, this water-rich Puducherry. I like these key words uh, that are actually coming up. And this speaks of your very, uh, you know, the, your endeavors, your efforts that are uh, reaching out to the grassroots level, uh, Dr. Kieran, and, and a global uh, theory that could also be used by others all across the world. Right, and, and uh, a while ago, you mentioned about the NAF, uh, Jyoti and India Vision Foundation. And uh, proceeds from this book would actually, the royalties would go towards this. Right. Now, um, can you tell us a little bit about this uh, Nav Jyoti uh, India Foundation, India Vision, and India, well, Vision, India Foundation. Vision Foundation came out of the Ramon Maxesi Award, which comes from Philippines. It's I see. Okay. To the Asian Nobel Peace Prize. Mm -hmm. So it came because of prison and police reforms. So mm -hmm. India Vision was born for continuing the prison reform program. So we educate mm -hmm. children of prisoners because many women who come with their children into the prison, we take care of playway schools for them and also taking care of their skills development and later on security mm -hmm. issues. So we have children, the foundation provides education too. So if you go to the India Vision Foundation website, you will know more. Similarly, okay. Navjoti India Foundation also is on a website mm -hmm. that was growing up as crime prevention. When I was in the Delhi police, mm -hmm. those days I used to um, open schools schools, street schools, playway schools, neighborhood schools for children mm -hmm. of drug addicts or children of drug peddlers to go to school so that mm -hmm. they don't follow the careers of their parents. And now it is today uh, empowering women, uh, skilling urban and rural poor. Okay, this is great, you know, because as a policewoman, you were not just catching thieves or, you know, putting people behind bars, but you were actually making sure that crime uh, goes down and, and uh, educating children of prisoners and making sure that um, you know children were educated, skill sets were given. You were actually trying to curb the problem, you know, because very often we hear of only people, the punitive actions that are being taken. But here you are trying to stop the problem. Now I like that, Dr. Kieran. That that must have been something. How did you think of this? This is something really really different. And today, many of us are talking about it, right? Uh, educating prisoners, children, and so forth. But there you did it. This is 40 years ago. Philomena, the leadership is all about problem solving, solutions providing. That's what mm -hmm. leadership is all about. My 40 years of work is all about leadership. Leadership, in it, whether it's policing, whether it's prison management, whether it's in social uh, entrepreneurship. I've used my powers of influence for social entrepreneurship as crime prevention, as crime mm. correction, as transformation, mm. as rehabilitation, as correction, the power of prevention. In fact, when I did my acceptance speech at the Max S.A. Award speeches, I said, policing is the power to correct, policing is the power to prevent, and policing is the power to get things done. Fantastic, I like that, you know, but when you think of the police, I think most people only equate it with, uh, you know, perhaps, um, an action or punishment or or uh, you know a lot of other things but uh, you've upheld the branding of the police the Indian uh, police uh, force you know and and you are I would say an icon uh, not just for women but also for everyone you know this is something which is really uh, inspirational 
how are you encouraging other young people, you know, to take up voluntary service? You know, this is something that uh, you've started this. Other young people who are also coming forward uh, to help out uh, people who are, um, you know, left behind such as prisoners, children, or even those who are underprivileged or homeless people. Do you find that volunteerism um, is happening or do you inspire them to do this? Is there something being done? In fact, there's not a day when, I, when the day is not spent in investing into youth. We are running many portals. My program mm -hmm. called Demonstrative Learning is a channel, a YouTube channel, Demonstrative Learning. It's a portal where we are connecting with the youth on a regular basis grooming them and uh, training them. So we are running Friday programs every Friday, five o'clock. We do a session with the youth where mm. they chat with me. I am on a regular chat programs, regular grooming on, on, on these channels called demonstrative learning. So these are YouTube channels which we are running. So we are, this book is now being used to groom leadership. This book of mine, we are very soon, I will be probably reading this book on my website and grooming, it's all about grooming leadership. So there's not a day which is not, um, which is missed out in connecting with the youth of this country. And this youth is connecting from all over the country, all over. And we have a regular weekly programs or conversations with me where they have a Q and A with me, a regular question answer to train them, inspire them, motivate Fantastic. them. Fantastic, yeah. yeah. And I'm connecting every day with colleges across the country, university and colleges, talking about this book. I've spread this book on, um, uh, on the soft copy to universities and managements all over, saying you can read and ask me questions. So they ask me and I groom them further. So I'm spending now most of my time uh, inspiring and grooming youth leadership through my own demonstrative learning channel, website, and the webinars. Thank you. Such words of wisdom. And uh, you know this is surely going to be inspiring a lot of people who are listening to this program. And uh, once again, Dr. Kiran Bailey, congratulations. I'm really proud to be talking to you. Uh, you're such an enigmatic, um, what, what do I say? You know, such a woman who is motivating at every different levels of your life. I think you're motivating not just women, but men. And I'm so proud that you've been with us here on TVAIB. Thank you so much for this interview.